event at this time. We'll speak responsibly, the words there as indicated, and we'll join together at the time of the confession. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. God, our God, invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and repentant hearts. Therefore, together, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us, and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for all our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you. 
Keep them and put them into practice because in this way your wisdom and your understanding will be recognized by all the people who hear about all these statutes and they will say, this great nation is certainly a wise and understanding people because what other great nation is there that has a God as close to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call on Him? What other great nation is there that has statutes and ordinances as righteous as this entire law that I am presenting to you today? This is the word of our God. Let's go again and sing. Take a stand on the evil day and, 
After you've done everything to stand, stand then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness fastened in place, and with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace tied to your feet like sandals. At all times hold up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Also take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. At every opportunity, pray in the Spirit with every kind of prayer and petition. Stay alert for the same reason, always persevering in your intercession for all the saints. Pray for me also, the Apostle Paul was writing, that when I open my mouth, the message will be given to me that boldly reveals the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may speak about it boldly, as it is necessary for me to speak. This is the word of our God. Let's sing our next verse.
you want to have in front of you the whole section. Ephesians chapter 6 is the basis for our ongoing encouragement. I've got a few of the verses here up in front of me so you can see them if you're looking at the projection. And there again is that the theme of your daily warfare, considering these verses under this encouragement, your daily warfare, who and how you fight. Okay, as we get in, a um, couple, couple misconceptions that might come to people's minds um, when, they, when they hear this set of verses in front of us. One of them, um, the, the battle and weaponry, weaponry, language, and imagery, but that may, for some people, let's have, have some awareness, it, it may make them a little bit, or maybe more than a little bit, uneasy. And you probably know enough world history, past and present, to understand why that might be. Think of how often military, um, not military, but militant activity, and I suppose military activity sometimes too, has come in the name of, in the name of religion. So let's be clear, Ephesians 5 in front of us, um, this section of God's Word, this is, is not talking about physical battle here in these descriptions. The words make crystal clear that this is not about a a physical battle under discussion. It's not physical in nature. So, here's the important part that comes out. This is not a battle against people. This is spiritual battle that we are, are told to prepare for and be aware of, and spiritual battle for which we are encouraged to gear up. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this darkness. Against, again, the piling of terms for this group, right? The spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places or heavenly realms. And so, the section of, of verses takes us to, to a, one of the, the unseen realities that scripture reveals to us. There's a lot of unseen realities that God has to reveal to us because we don't, we don't get to, to observe them with our eyes. And, and one of them is the spirit realm, or the activity of spirits in our world. The, the spirit realm, in particular, the activity of, of evil spirits is another place about which there's a lot of commonly held misconceptions out there. This is especially true if you think of, of recent and present history. Much of, much of recent history, at least in our modern Western culture, could probably be characterized best by, by a widespread disregard of the spiritual realm. Or even a large degree of simply scoffing at the idea of spiritual forces of evil. And so, for many years, maybe, maybe the only ways on a, a wider cultural platform that, that people were exposed to this idea, this topic of the, the spiritual realm, were, you know, A, a particular day in fall, where people, you'd see ghosts, and you'd see, and you'd see devils and demons, along with the more tame and benign costumes that people wear. Or, the other that would be common for, for many years was at the big screen, right? Different movies. I suppose now you could say the, the, stream, the, the show is live to streaming as well. So, with, with that being the case, you think maybe now, in our American culture, there, there has been some growth in discussion of supernatural things. And yet, the question you have to ask is, just because there's more discussion of it on a cultural level, is that discussion necessarily a healthy discussion? And a lot of it isn't. So, so much of what we see on our wider cultural level fails to be, A, an accurate depiction, or B, this, that there isn't an often enough discussion of the critically important realities of the, the spirit realm 
and activity of the, the spiritual forces of evil. And, and both of those, if you think about it, both of those failures line up with the devil's goals. If people either have an unhealthy interest in and, and these, these very confused, distorted images of the spiritual forces at work in our world, or if they ignore the reality, either, either one of those, the devil can, can make use of, right? In contrast, in answer to both of those, as a, as a corrective measure for denial, as a corrective measure for other errant views, we're told here, for our struggle, this is real, our struggle is not against, not against flesh and blood, but is against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places, the heavenly realms. So, you know, let that, let that sink in. That means we're up against forces out to, to damage and destroy on a level above and beyond the mere physical and emotional. Think how, um, think how we, we take we take, we go to great measures, and for, and for good reason, um, to try to avoid those kind of things, physical and emotional trauma. But the forces we are up against, which we're talking about now, are attacking at an even higher level. They're attacking spiritual and eternal well-being for us. That's what's under assault. And if we don't identify this properly, then we're in for a mess of, of danger. And once we do identify this properly, that, that this is the top priority, right? The issue of the battle for our, our souls. The next thing to note is, we would be so in over our heads if we look this way for strength. If we turn this direction to, to you and me for the strength in this battle. So, in addition to noting the who we are up against, who to fight. This section of God's Word in front of us, Ephesians chapter 6, it, it does us this huge service. God, God gives us so much to encourage us about how, how to go at this fight. So let's start by answering this how question. How, first, how do the devil and demons fight? Well, there is such a thing as, as demon possession. We hear, we hear multiple descriptions of that in the Bible, and, and the possibility, the potential for it is still the same today. Still, the vast majority of the focus of the devil and the demons in their attack on us is not through that avenue of demon possession. So, do hold on to a warning. Don't mess around with spirit inviting, evil spirit inviting activities like the Ouija board and, and seances and, and fortune telling and Charlie Charlie and, and things like that. At the same time as that, recognize that the most common <coughs> form of assault, that a term again from, from schemes, the root in the Greek method, that the most common methodology that the devil attacks us with is not demon possession, but it is lies. The, the devil's name, it has at the root that very word, he is, a, he is a liar. And notice, all the way back at the very beginning, his first attack upon humanity, what did he use? He used lies. The thing the devil leverages as a constant tool or again, method, scheme on us is his lies. As you talk about methodology or the, the schemes he uses, think about this. He, the, first, the first attack back in the Garden of Eden, he didn't, he didn't bite them. His goal wasn't to sink into flesh and blood. What was his goal? His goal was to get his thoughts to them. That those thoughts of his might then be accepted into their thinking. So this isn't, 
this isn't flesh and blood issue. It, it's a heart issue, and I understand that correctly. Right, it's not physical heart issue. It's the, the heart and mind issue that is spiritual. Um, who do you trust? What do you love most? Who or what is on the throne of your heart? And notice how the, the devil goes at his attack. He doesn't come with, we have plenty of examples to, to look at in Scripture. He doesn't come with spiritual daggers showing and arrows blazing fire showing in, in, in clear in view in front of you. He hides that. He hides his identity behind a, a counterfeit front. Behind a, a, a masquerade, we're told. That he even masquerades as an angel of light. Those are the descriptions that Scripture gives for how the devil goes at his battle. And the practical side of what we see then is this. He'll, he'll try to give the impression as he, he offers his thoughts, he'll try to give the impression that he's a friend. He'll, he'll try to, to present a caring face. He, he pretends and, and, and postures himself as, as being empathetic towards us. He wants to get us to believe that what he has to suggest is good. That what he has to offer is good. Do you see what, what that, that equates to? you see what that means? He's trying to deceive us into thinking that what he is giving is, is from God. Because everything good is from God. He, he's trying to maybe even get us to think that, that he is God. Offering the stuff that is good. But behind that, even couched in, in everything that he is presenting to us are the spiritual daggers and the arrows by which he would, he would have the bullets in poison and insert poison for, for our hearts. Examples could, you know, a list of examples could go on and on and on. Just think of some of the methods, right? Think of some of the methods that he uses in this, in this battle. Um, coaxing you and me to rationalize sins as if, as if they aren't that big of a, a, of a deal, right? As if there isn't anything maybe even wrong with them. Like, um, it's, not, it's not lying so much as just stretching a little bit of the facts or, or leaving out some of the, the details unnecessary to share with people. He, he uses methodologies or schemes like, um, think of this one, overstressing the mercy of God. Is that possible? To, to give the, the, the idea that, oh, that's sin, that's not, that's not so big, that's not, that's not so dangerous. He uses uh, methods like um, urging you to compare your flaws and your wrongs to, to other people's wrongs. Or, or this one, um, one area of your life to another area of your life. So that you, you, you start to, to, to rationalize and say, well, I'm, I'm pretty good with this and with this and with this, and I'm really good in this way, so it's not so big a deal if I and you insert the sin. And he's put you with one of his, his lies. I'm, I'm really pretty good on caring in my words to my friends and my family, so it's really not, it's really not that big of a weakness if I, if I gossip a little bit about others. Or urging urging on the, the thoughts um, you deserve it. You, you've been through so much, or, or they've put you through so much, so, so this, this sin, it's, it's understandable. You, you deserve it. So, just think of that. I mean, and that's, just a, that's just a short list of a few examples. Up against all of that, how do we fight? So, we talked maybe primarily to this point, from a perspective of not underestimating the, the devil and the demons. Um, we don't want to do that. We also don't want to overestimate them. In this sense, they would love to get us to feel helpless and hopeless in this battle. Remember, Satan doesn't know everything. And Satan is not all-powerful like God. 
Not all of the demons together have that kind of that kind of power available to them. But so don't don't overestimate them, but also don't don't underestimate them. They have a lot more experience than we have experience. They've been around a lot longer than we have been around. They've had a lot longer time to hone their methodology and their, their types of attack. They, they've had a lot longer to observe humanity than we have had to kind of try to gauge their methods. And they, they've had time to observe us in particular and maybe try to figure out what are our individual weaknesses. So they, they are, remember, they are powerful spiritual beings, but also remember they are not all powerful. And the one who is all powerful is opposed to Satan and is opposed to the demons. And he sets before us himself and his weapons for our spiritual defense. So, so turn to him and, and rely on him and, and trust what he tells us and use the tool that he puts into our hands and into our hearts through, through his word. The Lord's plan for us in this battle, it isn't dependent on on strength originating from within us. Like I said earlier, we'd be in a mess of trouble if we turned it this way, looking as the, the source of our defense. Instead, it is, we hear from the very beginning, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty strength. It's not from, it's not from composing enough strength from within or compiling enough wisdom of our own that we can stand against the assaults of Satan and the demons, it's in the Lord and His strength that you have the ability to defend against these attacks. And that strength in the Lord, as I said, comes from being in, in, the, in the Word and, and through the Word standing in, in Christ. That phrase is used so often in the Bible to be that you are in Christ through faith. That's, that's where you stand. The Word is the tool that God uses to give, to give new strength. So let's, let's hear that, that strength-imparting message, this news about Jesus. You know, flesh and blood, you know, just think of that. Our battle is not against, against flesh and blood, but think about, think about flesh and blood. And, and when, Jesus, when Jesus took on flesh and blood in order, to, in order to live in our shoes and battle against Satan, think about how he operated. When Satan came tempting him, he, he didn't respond with, well, I don't have to take this ordeal that you're putting me through and then squash Satan like a bug. He, he didn't do that. It's true that he, he had the power to do that. He didn't have to deal with the ordeal or deal with Satan if he didn't want to. But he didn't flex on Satan in that way. Instead, he set aside the use of his divine power. And he showed the power of his will to fight off temptation. To live in, in flesh and blood, just like you and me. But to fight off every temptation throughout his lifetime in order that there is a perfect record of obedience to God's commandments. Then, as he went on to his death, you know, think about this. He, he didn't come down from the ordeal that he was suffering there upon the cross. He could have done that. He could have come down. He, he had the power, but he didn't flex his muscles and turn the cross into a pile of ash beneath him as he, he exited stage center upward into heaven in a flash of, of glory. Instead, he chose to show the power of his love and to suffer through that entire ordeal that he was going through there on the cross. And the ordeal was more than the pain inflicted on his flesh. The, the ordeal was so much more than what the Roman soldiers inflicted upon him. Again, we get, we get insight into this unseen reality from Scripture, from Jesus' own words recorded in Scripture, to understand what he really suffered there when he says that he was forsaken 
by God the Father. In other words, what that means for us is the guilt of our sin, that the separation from a holy God that that sin deserved, he suffered that punishment. And Jesus didn't do all that for himself. He didn't have anything to gain for himself through his life and death in the flesh. But he wanted to gain everything for us. And he did. And he gives his holy life and pardon for all sin to everyone who trusts in him. Now, now he's taken back up full use of his divine power. Now, he's risen from death and he, he lives again forever. He's ascended to his, his throne in heaven and whoever, whoever is his, meaning whoever lives and believes in him, has eternal life. And so when your life here is done, at that very moment, God will take you to be with him in his holy presence, your soul. And on the last day, he'll raise your body from the grave. And then body and soul together, he will give you eternal life of peace with him. Then, then all warfare, both physical and spiritual, will be over forever. So, so Jesus won the war against Satan and against death and against hell for us. And it's that very news that is the, the faith-strengthening tool our God gives to us. And, and it's his word there, and it's his word in baptism, and it's his word connected with the supper that Jesus has, has given to us. And knowing that love of him, having the peace that comes from that good news of what Jesus has done for us, we get up daily in the strength that he provides through his word. It's not with our strength that we fight off the spiritual attacks that we face. It's in the Lord. It's in the strength he has given us. It's through the, the, the word that he, he gives to us. We fight the demons that challenge that the Lord deserves first place in our lives. We fight the demons that challenge every assault that comes against this word of our God. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. We continue in our service, we see we have our confession of faith, and in this form format, I'll offer up some questions just to get us thinking, and then we'll speak together the words of the Nicene Creed. I might just stand at this part of our service. In a world that can only guess it was created somehow and by something, what do you believe? We believe in one God. Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. In a world that often teaches Jesus was just a great human teacher, a wise prophet, or just another way to God, what do you believe? We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. In a world that still believes salvation is through the good and helpful things that we do, what do you believe? For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. In a world that loosely holds on to every word that sounds spiritual or religious, what do you believe? We believe in the Holy Spirit. Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please have a seat. The offerings that we give are given to um, support the spread of God's saving word. Um, so if, if you do have an offering and you're here in person, the offering plate is there in, in the aisle on the way out. We've been doing that that way for, for several months now. Um, if you're online and you would like to, to give an offering, as in the past, uh, there's an online digital donation option on our website as you scroll down, or I'll just merely send it in here to, to the church address. In our prayers, I'll... I'll Briefly include the request for um, those suffering from the increase in, you know, the COVID cases. Uh, we had a message about earlier this week. Andrew Reinheimer, one of our members, um, had a positive test for COVID and is um, checked with him this morning. He's starting to get get a little better. He's been able to stay home through through dealing with his symptoms. Um, there, uh, I've seen a couple other congregations, sister congregations, that this Sunday had to um, to not just to do their gathering just online because of on COVID cases in their midst. So um, one of them, our sister church down the road, Ascension in Jacksonville. Um, so we'll pray for for those in, um, individuals that are, are dealing with this and also for our, our health care workers uh, providing care for all of them. Then please join with me in the Lord's Prayer as well. Lord God, thank you for thank you for your word of truth that that opens our eyes to things we will never never know. On our own, most importantly, um, that it's Jesus and it's you, you Lord Jesus, that brings our forgiveness and our heaven. Um, we, we look forward to that. We look forward to an eternity with you. Um, thank you for your word that gives us strength and truth in the battle against the, the devil's lies and attacks on us. Continue to, to take us to your word, to open our hearts to understand that word, and to, to give us ability to share that, that word in our in our church family, in our homes, and, and beyond. Um, Lord God, be with those in the midst of this ongoing pandemic. Um, be with Andrew. Be with our, our fellow believers and sister churches that, um, that have tested positive and are dealing with the, the effects of, of COVID. Um, be, with, be with all of us through this. Be with, be with our caregivers, um, nurses, doctors, um, all of those that are providing um, care for those that are sick. Um, continue to bring healing to those sick. Preserve the, the health of, of others and, and bless us to continue to, to turn to you as the source of our, our true and lasting healing, even amidst the difficulties in life. We offer up all these things and also ask you to hear us as we pray the prayer you, Jesus, have taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Continue responsibly with a few words. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him praise and grace. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ in love. He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, he empowered his church to be witnesses of Christ to the ends of the earth. Now come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, we praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever.
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which he gave for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which he gave for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. The Lord bless and keep each one of you in your days. Peace be with you. Take a drink. This
this is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which He shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Now may this eating and drinking truly strengthen you in your faith, preserve you in that faith until you reach life everlasting. Be at peace. Be assured your sins are forgiven. Turn into a closing portion for our gathering today. I invite you to stand at this time and join us. Lord, look on you with his favor and give you peace.